Hi and welcome to another video here on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this video, we're going to look at how to extract table data using both the classic experience and the modern design experience. So we'll look at how to do data scraping, that's the classic experience, and how to do table extraction, and that's using the modern design experience. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to my channel. Click that little red watermark down in the right hand corner. Also at the end of the video, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. But let's get to it. All right, so I have Studio opened here. And the first thing I want to do, because we'll start by doing it in the classic experience, is I will go to my project and my project settings. And then I'll disable the modern design experience down here. And that will cause us to reload the project. And now we're ready to go. So I'll open the main workflow. And then I'll open a browser. And I'll go to one of my favorite websites, which is Chrono24. And I will search for a certain watch and we'll go with a Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical Watch because I just happen to know that there are 177 results for that watch in Chrono24, which is a website where you can buy and sell watches. And what you can see in here is that uh, if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we can see that the result actually spans across three pages in this case. So we want to extract the data inside of this uh, table with all of these watches. Right, so we'll go back to Studio and we will use the data scraping activity up here. And once we do that, it's going to ask us to actually go to the browser and select one of the fields that we want to extract data from. So I'll open my browser. I'll just scroll down a little bit so we can see an entire record here. And then I'll go back to this uh, little dialog box. Then I'll click Next. And now it's going to ask us to point to a field that we want to extract data from. And of course, we'll want to extract the name of the watch. So we'll click on that. Then it'll ask us to click on the second element in the table, but the same field. So we'll click on the next uh, watch and click on the name of the watch. And then it'll ask us for a column name. And we'll just uh, call it model. We could also opt here to extract the URL and we'll do that. And we will call it model URL, the field. Then I'll click next. And now it'll actually show us the data that we just uh, extract with the selections that we've made so far. And we can see that here that we have a, a long list of watches. And we can see over here, if we scroll to the, to the right, we can see that we have a long list of URLs to those watches. What we can also do is we can edit the data definition for this selection. And if we do that, it'll actually show us what the data scraping engine is looking for. We're not going to pay much attention to that right now, but we'll go to this little text field right here that indicates the maximum number of results that we'll want to retrieve. And right now that is set to 100. We want all 177 results. So I'll set it to zero because that indicates that we want the whole result. Also, we want more than just the name and the URL for the watch. So we'll click the Extract Correlated Data button. And that will let us click another field. So we'll click the price field here. And again, it'll ask us to click on a second element, but the same field. So we'll click on the price of this second watch. And we will call this column price. We'll click next. And now it's going to show us again the result of that extraction. But we can see that it's fairly successful in extracting the data that we want. We could click the extract correlated data once more and we'll just select the location of the watch. And again, I'll click Next and click the next element. And we'll call this country. Click Next. And we can see here that now we also get the country for each of the watches. Now, when I click Finish here, it's going to prompt me uh, to select whether or not this data that I want to extract spans multiple pages. And uh, in this case, it does. As you remember from the beginning at the bottom of the page, we had this uh, page uh, selector. So we'll go back to our little dialog box and select yes. And then we'll select the next button here uh, for going to the next page. There we go. And now this whole data scraping activity has been configured basically. And what it does is it extracts the data, and then it wants to output that data to a data table. 
and it created, in fact, a variable for that data called extract data table. If we go down to our variables pane here, we can see that that data table actually does exist. So what we'll just do is we'll go to activities and we'll just uh, create a message box. And we'll just say that we found and then the extract data tables row, oh, sorry, row count. Like that. So now it should say that we found 177 watches once this uh, automation has run. So let's try to run this. And while we run it, we'll switch to the browser here and we'll actually see the, the automation jump to the next page in order to uh, extract the data from all three pages. So I'll just select run. And we should see it switch to the next page right there. And now to the last page right there. And then in a second, we should see a little dialog box or message box saying how many watches we found. And there we go. After a little while, we get the result saying that we found 177 watches. So that's how you do it in the classic experience. So if we go back to our project here and delete all of the activities, go to the project settings and enable the modern design experience, it'll reload the project. And we're ready to start over. So we'll go back to our Chrono 24 page, search for the same watch one more time. We have 177 watches in the result. We'll minimize the browser. And now we can see that the data scraping option is gone up here. It is now called table extraction. So if I click that, it's going to ask me again to, to point to that data in a browser. So I'll uh, reopen my browser here. And now this little dialog box has changed quite a bit. First of all, we need to click this Add Data button up here in order to even get started. Also up here, we have the option for each of the data fields that we add to extract the URL. And for now, it's uh, enabled, and now I can disable it again uh, by clicking the button. So um, in order to get started, it says it right here, click Add Data to get started. So we'll just scroll down a little bit so we can see our elements, and then I'll click Add Data. And then I'll click the first element that I want to extract, and that is the name of the watch as in the previous example. And once I do that, it's going to try to find that same field in all of the other watches. And it did it quite well. So now all we need to do is go to this new column that it added and change some of the settings. And we'll just change this to model, click save, and then we can finish our selection. Now we've only added one column so far. And if we go down to the bottom here, in the bottom right corner, we can preview the data that it's going to extract with this selection. So we'll do that. And we can see again here that it finds the names of the watches just fine. So we'll go back, add some more data. We'll point to the price. And we can see that it finds the price again um, very nicely. And we'll configure the column and call it price. So we'll click finish selection and we'll preview the data once again. And we can see that it finds the prices. And just as before, we'll click add data, add the column or the location, rename the column to uh, country. And, and by the way, when configuring each of the columns, we have options to set the data type if it's a text, number or date and time. But for now, we'll just stay with text. So we'll save, finish the selection and preview the data. And we can see just as before, we get both the name, the price and the country for each watch. Also down here, we can see in the settings that we can limit the extraction to either no limit or to a maximum number of rows or a maximum number of pages. But we don't want any limit to our extraction. We're going to extract everything, but we haven't been prompted to indicate this next page button. 
So we'll just scroll down to the next page button till we find it down here. Uh, it's at the bottom of the page. There we go. And then we'll click this next button configurator up here. And that will let us point to the next button. And now we can click save. And we go back into studio. And from here, basically the technique is the same in that the extract uh, activity in here in the middle is going to extract the result into an extract data table variable that is of course of the type data table. Now this has a number of options on it that we're not going to get into in this video, but uh, let's just for now try to run this uh, extraction and see what it does. Just as before, we will uh, add a message box. And we will say that we found and then concatenate the string with the extract data table row count to string value and then add on the watches text. There we go. So if we run this now, we should see it go and find the watches and switch to the other pages. Now we're on page two. Now we're on page three. And we found 177 watches. So that was a very quick look at how you extract table data using the data scraping technique in the classic experience and the table extraction technique in the modern design experience. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos from me. Until next time, stay safe. See you then.